ok. So, uh, let us now uh, do some examples right. And as usual we will begin with our uh, uh, the simplest possible network that uh, uh, we can think of. We have a voltage source correct, uh, a resistor, a periodically operated switch and a capacitor C and uh, this is uh, uh, driven periodically. So, let us assume that this is 0, this is T s, this is phi 1 right and let us say this is a duty cycle D, D times T s. Of course, the switch is being periodically operated and uh, suppose we are interested in only the samples of uh, the capacitor waveform. Uh, so, this is V o V o of n times T s. So, the, the sampling instants are zero T s and so on. Hmm? So, what do we do? So, we need to find so the in other words what we are trying to do is we have V i there is some h equivalent of T the output of which is sampled and uh, this output is V out, v out of N T. All right. Okay. So, what comment can we make uh, uh, with regard? How do we get h equivalent of t? Well, you form the adjoint network. So this is n. Uh, this is a voltage input, voltage output. So what should we do? Yeah, we first draw the adjoint network. Uh, the voltage source remains V i, and what happens to the? Uh, so this becomes phi one of minus t, and uh, therefore phi one hat simply becomes. Okay. All right. So this is the adjoint network, and we are interested in. We are interested in uh, the uh, what do you call? Uh, uh, the uh, the equivalent transfer function uh, that is uh, at the end of uh, I mean at zero T s and so on. So what should we do? We would basically like to inject impulse an impulse current delta T, and uh, what are we supposed to do? Measure the output current I out of T. All right. So, what happens when you inject a current? What will happen? The voltage that is developed across the capacitor is 1 by C and uh, remain the same throughout up to D times 
T s at this point what will happen? Oh, sorry. This is yeah. This is the voltage. Correct. This is okay. But in VTS period, it will discharge as cap is instantly charges and then. Correct. So basically, uh, the voltage. So if I call this V C. Yeah. Outer. Right. Uh, okay. V C is like this. Then what happens? The exponential it will decay. It will decay. Correct. Yeah. Then uh, uh, what what happens? Yeah, this will be 1 by C times, uh, let's see, let's call this, uh, uh, let's call e to the power minus d times T s by R C, let's call this alpha, right. So, this will be, this voltage will therefore be 1 by C times alpha, correct. Then what will happen? It will remain the same till the next period and uh, it will decay alpha square. alpha square by C, decays, remains the same, becomes alpha square, alpha cube by C and so on, right. So, but that is uh, not exactly the, uh, the output waveform we are after, we are interested in the current through the resistor. So, what will be the current in the resistor? Like alpha by R by R no, think carefully. What will it be before when the switch is open? Zero. Yeah. Then when the switch is closed, what will it, what will it be? By R C, so 1 by R C, then it will become 0, yeah. then it will start off, alpha by RC. this is alpha by R C like this and so on, correct. So, this is H equivalent of, this is I out, right and uh, you know H equivalent of T is basically uh, divided, this divided by ampere second. So, that is, uh, that in fact, that 1 already has got Coulomb in it, right. So, when you divide by ampere second, you basically you will get just 1 by R c and all this stuff, correct. So, what is the Fourier transform, how does this, uh, uh, this uh, look like in the, uh, in the frequency domain? Well, uh, this is delayed by, what is this delay? It is 1 minus d times T s, right. So, that, so basically if we find the Fourier transform of the rest of this, correct, we can just simply multiply by e to the minus j 2 pi f times 1 minus uh, d times T s to get the Fourier transform of the uh, of H equivalent, right. So, what the question is, what is the Fourier transform of, let me call this uh, of this pulse, which is basically right. So, let us call this P of t, right and uh, see what the Fourier transform of this is, correct or oh, sorry rather, rather let me make this, uh, let us call this. So, this is 1 by R c, right and this is alpha by R c, okay. If we call this pulse P of t, what is this waveform? It is P of T plus alpha times T minus T s plus alpha square P of T minus 2 T s and so on, correct. So, what is the Fourier transform? So, if you if we know the Fourier transform of P of T, we will be able to, yeah, simply it is a matter of scaling and shifting and then adding them all up and then that is uh, okay. So, uh, the, uh, the Fourier transform of P of t is actually pretty straightforward, right. Uh, it is uh, P of t therefore, uh, you can see is nothing but 1 by R c times e to the minus t by R c, 
correct M minus uh, this times u of t minus 1 by r c e to the minus t minus d t s by r c u of t minus d t s. So, in other words for p of t itself if you find the Fourier transform of this we will be able to just shift and uh, delay and then you will be able to get the Fourier transform of the pulse. This is nothing but the uh, uh, exponentially decaying pulse uh, waveform and this is nothing but 1 by 1 plus j 2 pi f r c that is the Fourier transform of, of uh, uh, just a decaying exponential. This times 1 minus e to the minus j 2 pi f uh, into uh, is delayed by d t s correct. That is the p of f correct and uh, so what is the uh, for the Fourier transform of, of uh, this periodic waveform is p of f times 1 plus alpha e to the minus j 2 pi f t s plus alpha square. So, h equivalent of j 2 pi f is this plus alpha square e to the minus j 2 pi into 2 f t s and so on which therefore is given by 1 over 1 plus j 2 pi f r c into 1 minus e to the minus j 2 pi f times d t s divided by this is nothing but a geometric progression. So, that is nothing but 1 minus alpha e to the minus j 2 pi f Okay. All right. So, uh, if you plot this, uh, what do you think uh, uh, you will see? Well, this is the p of f right uh, but i'm uh, most interested in uh, in this function the denominator function what do you think it will be at t equal to 0 i mean at at f equal to 0 this is going to be at, at dc is going to be 1 by 1 minus alpha right that is the, just the denominator right. Then at uh, T s by 2 what will it be at, at, at f equal to T s uh, I mean 2 by T s what will it be yeah. So, you will have 1 by 1 plus alpha right. So, correct at f s what will happen again alpha. So, basically this function alpha is going to be I mean if uh, if r c is much much greater than uh, d t s what comment can you make about alpha. alpha is almost one. Yeah alpha will be approximately 1. So, 1 by 1 minus alpha will be a number which is 
very large compared to 1 and 1 by 1 plus alpha will be some number close to 2 correct. So, you can see that this uh, the denominator which is uh, this quantity 1 by that quantity is periodic with so it will peak at 0, it will peak at f s, it will peak at 2 f s, it will peak at 3 f s and so on and this is uh, multiplied by this Fourier transform of that pulse right and that basically uh, it turns out to be some we will take a look at it in the next class but it turns out to be something like this. So, when you multiply these two things what comment can you make about uh, the uh, the sample value on the capacitor they will still be peaks at. So, you will have you will have peaks at at f s 2 s 3 f s and 4 and this we knew already right. Remember when we, uh, we, we discuss this intuitively if r c is much much larger than than c I mean uh, than t d times t s right then the the uh, capacitor will see the same uh, if the input is a multiple of the uh, the switching frequency then the capacitor will see the same section of that input voltage every cycle and therefore you will expect to see a maximum a local maximum at fs at fs right and at 2 fs and at 3 fs and at 4 fs i mean this is basically just telling you that, that that is indeed correct right okay we will continue with this in the next class.